All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Backseat Drawing Podcast. I am here with my good friend Wildberry from Twitch, and we're going to draw together on this canvas and chat about art and stuff. So we were just about to talk about your writing. (laughs) Yeah. So that's a that's a thing to unfold. Um, (laughs) So, ah, gosh. And we could draw um, I if guess, you want to draw while we're talking. Yeah, I don't. I, it says I don't own a layer. I don't really know what to do about that though. Oh well, okay. So bottom right corner are all the layers, and then you could hit the yeah. hole. There's like one singular sheet of paper there that you could tap, and that should make you another layer. It's like a little piece of paper. It's not the two papers, but the one paper. Ah, there you go. Cool. With the fold in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now you got a layer. All right, excellent. So. I don't know why we're a square, but we're a square. <laughs> and the brushes are on the left. So you're not a draw you're not an artist by drawing sense no, of, not, of the word. Not so much, no. I draw in your brain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we have so, to do all the work for that. We have to think up the images. Yeah, but you know, but it's my job to paint it for you with my words. And from what I've been told, I do a good job, not to toot my own horn, but I mean I got my degree in it, so I'd hope I'm at least decent at it. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the smart thing to do would be to start at where, like, how I started writing. Yes, right? please. So I still cannot find an eraser. Okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. I yeah. found it. I can erase this. Oh, that's, that didn't work. And the undo buttons are, like, at the top, too. <laughs> ah, I got it. There we go. Um, don't look at my monstrosity. Uh, so well, I started writing about five years ago. I... It's kind of funny how I started too, because it was it was more out of, out of spite really than anything how I started. Okay. Um, because I'd been on this I'd been on this uh, RPG online when I was in high school, um, called the Dark Era, Ooh. and uh, it, it was very uh very edgy. I've been there. Um, but I, know. <laughs> I just got a huge wave of of nostalgia or not nostalgia. Um, shoot, I can't come up with the word. What when you think you've seen something before? Oh, deja vu. Deja right? vu. I just got yeah. hit with a major wave of deja vu. I was setting down my pen, uh, trying to come up with the word uh, edgy. That, and <laughs> that's really weird. All right, cool. So I, I think it's the first one of those I've had in a while. That's um, fun. But Maybe you yeah, are like, like a like robot to, and not human, not a real person. I just like to think that it just means that you're going in the right direction. That's, um, that's nice to think about. Yeah. I never get those, um, so I must be... <laughs> I must be well, going. I'd, I'd teach their own. But yeah, so I was in, on this RPG and um, I, my friend Mike, who was, the, uh, who was the dungeon master, more or less, of this RPG, and he was complaining one day when we were hanging out that no, none of the villains he, he ever made lasted more than like two minutes in this RPG because everybody's character was way overpowered. Like yeah. you had... There was one person who had Merlin, basically, who like infinite magic, but he was a pacifist. So unless you punch his friend, he's you know not going to do anything. But as soon as he punches his friend, then well, you're just going to get an infinite lightning bolt to your face. So it just it was just ridiculous. There's a guy who could run at the speed of sound and make portals. You know. Yeah, how RPs are back back in the day. <laughs> yeah, just and this one had gotten a little out of hand. Yeah. Um. So he was complaining that that. that None of the villains he made ever lasted very long because everybody just gone, done, moving on. And so I was like, just let me make one. And he was like, I don't know, because I, I may or may not have had a history of breaking his systems prior to that, to that moment. I had been in his um, Star Wars D&D game that he had, he had made, and I made, oh, wow. I more or less made, I made a... A four a four lightsaber wielding Muay Thai what the hell Jedi. <laughs> and it just yeah it was it was so broken but yeah so that aside uh he, so he was very hesitant to let me make one and finally he was like all right fine you can make it but I still have to approve it I was like okay cool so I spent the next two days crafting this thing um I forgot I can draw uh, yes, you can. You're free to. I already drew a cat because I don't know what, yeah, what to do. Yeah, I see draw. that, and it's very, it's very cute. Thank I, you. I like it. <laughs> so I went home and I crafted this this character the next two days. And so he's like, why, "Why am I still a square?" 
Um, I don't, I know. don't there, know. There is a paintbrush, and there is also a what? pen. Oh, you're probably using the pencil. The pencil looks I like a pencil. The, the, pe the brush looks like a brush. Oh, there you go. Excellent. Okay, cool. So the pencil brush doesn't act like a real pencil. It just kind of. Yeah, it's a weird squareness. It's a pixel brush. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so I spent the next two days crafting it. So as you can might expect, I was pretty excited about it when I was done because I mean it was it was intricate. You know, like all of his stuff was like it's just a giant dragon, and I was like, okay, but that doesn't have the layers necessary to combat all these different things that these different characters have. Yeah. So like he had like a number of different. I think he had three relics more or less I don't, have you ever seen scooby-doo back uh and zo on zombie island oh y yes uh, i don't i don't remember like the plot to it <laughs> i think i have that like on, i think i have that on like vhs somewhere this is an awful cat medallion oh my goodness but oh. <laughs> basically <laughs> you can always you can always uh, write on the canvas i'm not gonna judge well i'm just drawing for reference you can um, draw but... <laughs> So it had it had this cat medallion. Oh, oh, you're talking about um, the medallion. Okay, yes. Yeah, it was this medallion that he that he was wearing. And he it was one of the it it, it was uh, called the Traveler's Cat, and it allows him it allows the wearer to die nine times before they finally like are actually dead. That's sick. Um, yeah, and he had this armor that was like a living armor. It would like shift and thicken in different areas, like in preparation for where he was about to be struck, it wasn't impenetrable, but it was really difficult to get through. And he had this sword that was just full of knowledge and had all the sorts of different crazy spells and everything it could do. And every time he died, he would come back stronger. Okay. And I, so I brought him, I brought this kit, this little thing that I had made back to Mike. And I was like, hey, what do you think? And he was like, looked it over, read it. And he was like, no. I was like, why? He was, he was like, it's just too much. You know, maybe if you dumped this down, made this easier, I think it would be good. And I'm like, you literally were complaining that they, it was all too easy. And he was, he was like, yeah, I just, I just can't. Ah, nope, nope, sorry. And he was, he said, said it on. I was like, all right. So I dropped out of the RPG and I started writing the story myself. And five years later, well, five and a half years later, I am here. <laughs> so. So that's what got you into writing. Yeah, so I you, I was. You're not a writer yeah. by birth, as some people no, are. No, I could see. when I was a when I was a kid, I oh I hated. my god, how is it that she always come in? How, how are you always on time for the podcast? Like every single, you weren't even home. <laughs> oh, it's the podcast. Let me try to correct my voice. Oh, my mom is like subconscious about how she speaks. I wish I could speak like you. <laughs> Chieko got really excited. Wildberry, my mom's Who are here. Who are interviewing? Wildberry is here today. Hello, Wildberry. Hello, I am Wildberry you... Flopter. Yeah, he says hi. Oh, he. Yeah. I know, we have a male yep. guest. So cool. <laughs> wow, let's look at this. Oh, I like I, I like his little I um, drew this thing. one. What is that again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do the little drawings. They're drawings, yeah. It's a cat. Um, Wildberry's I... drawing this cat medallion. That? <laughs> yeah, that. Well, we're talking about something related to uh, it right now. Who did that? That's me. <laughs> okay. I have a present for you. Did you see all the onion dip I made you? I did. I'm going downstairs to eat it. Okay, what? Is it the is it the bed risers for this oh, tiny desk? That's here too. What is I it? I would love to have. Can you guess? A bigger USB port? If I knew you needed that, I would have gotten you that. Just joking. Don't need it. Okay. A pot for the cacti over there. Oh darn! <laughs> I, I I was in. I should have. Sorry, screwed up there. Forgot about that. Okay, that's fair. It's so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I have no other guesses. Would you like to guess, super guest? Super guest. Um, I'm going to guess it's your own personal clown. Mm -hmm. He said my own personal clown. Close. Really? No. You're close. It has. Shit, I think there's a clown in here. <laughs> well, okay. now I'm scared. <laughs> there's no clown. It, it is. He has really big hair. Oh, oh. Clownish I... hair. <laughs> and it's brown. Brown? Like a brown and person used, or a brown? And he's, like, no. 
Okay. So it's like brown, clown brown raggedy here. Ann? Afro. Like, brown raggedy right. Ann. <laughs> no. Do they make brown raggedy Ann? Is she only no, white? No, I don't think so. I think she, I don't know. I would hope that by now they would make something You're of saying. color. Um, and he's a painter. Bob? Who? Bob, Bob Ross? Ross? Bob? He's, yes. yes. He's dead, though. What? I didn't say he had to be alive. Where is he? What's Where is he? Thing? Is he here? He's here. He's here right now? He's here Bob? right now. Look oh what my I God. found! <laughs> I was gonna save it for your birthday, but I can't. My birthday's in like six months. <laughs> oh, Wait, no, no, no! It's Bob again. Ross. Hold no. up, I have to switch to a camera. No. Wait, we are. Hold up. No. Check oh. this out. It's Bob. It's a Bob Ross bobblehead. Check it out. With stream. sound. With sound. Uh-huh. Wait, I can't. I still can't see it. The stream will catch up if you're watching okay. the stream. Yeah, I'm I'm over on the stream now. Wait. Wait? I got you something else. Is it the bed risers? <laughs> what even is that more? It's Bob Ross Bobblehead. I got you something else. Okay, what? Oh, guess. I don't know. I have no other guesses. He's got big I got hair. a guess. Wildberry has a guess. Yes. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. That's his guess? No. Close. Yeah, I didn't think Close so. with the clown. Closer with the clown. Big hair. And is also an artist. Big hair, also an artist. Oh, I see it now. Oh, that's super cool. Wow, is my um, stream really that far behind for you? Yeah, I know, it's, right? It must be like, the room. It's the new room. Okay, I'll what? tell you. What? I got you another Bob Ross bobblehead. Two? Wait, do you know why I got you another one? Well, I, you shouldn't open this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Because why the people at the store said, "Honey, you better buy all of those because in about ten years they're gonna be a collector's item." Wow, stonks! Am I right? So I mean, being that's that fair. You're, you know, doing so well in your um, what stonks. Did, yes, and what else did you sell recently? That that head. <laughs> Chico said Tim Curry. <laughs> Tim Curry. Oh, that would have been a good one. Um. <laughs> How about chicken curry? That chicken sounds good. Curry. Mm. I'm hungry Ooh, now. Oh, look, he has a little book. Good, Bob. Okay, wait. Yeah? So keep this for your collectors, you know. Remember that bobblehead you sold? What? I sold Gerard my way. I sold my Gerard Way pop vinyl for like, I think it was like 80 bucks. It was crazy. Okay, so this. <laughs> and Bob- I miss him. He was cute. So this Bob Ross. Will eventually be eighty bucks one day. Oh, oh ah, look ah, at whoops. that! What's that? I'm mad. Hit, ah, what happened? You have to deselect. I don't know. Yeah, just I, tap. I, I, yeah. There we go. There I got it. Okay. okay. I'm bad. It comes with little paintings. You can show your fans. Okay. Cool. We are chatting about things. You're so mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my room, please. All right. Where should I put Bob? I I I thought you could put him good here. where you know he lights he makes sounds. Okay, let's find let's out. Let's see what he does. Why am I a danger? Oh, we cannot eat Tim Tim Curry, but I could eat Tim Curry's chicken curry. Sounds just like well, it again. But what? why did why does that make me a danger though? Wow, well, why is everything happen? Oh, wow, I forgot. A bravery test. Pretty, uh, praise it again. No, we have to. We have to podcast. We have to push it on the mic. We have to pot. They can hear. Okay, remember, don't open. don't open it. Got it. Check this out. Okay, don't do that to this one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> do you think it was a good idea to buy you two? I guess because they were. It's not going anywhere. Wait, just a minute. I mean, okay. yeah, you got you got one at, one store. for fun and one for and one the, for the you know at the store value. Money. Saying, you better go get another one. Is this from Jerry's? And by the time I went to go get another one, there was only one left. Jerry's? Oh, no. shoot. Oh, not Jerry's. Interesting. And this galley. Okay, we could go back to talking about writing. The Unless joy of gardening? you're still looking oh, at chakras. The joy of chakras, <laughs> is not gardening. Gosh, you know, I don't book on gardening. Almost thought you flipped on me there. Chieka wants to know your pronouns, Wildberry. Oh, he, him. She's not talking to me. Sorry. Yeah, get out of here. Get out of here. I'm leaving. Bye. I am, I am he, I, uh, he, him. Yeah. You can close it. Lola will knock if she wants in. Thank you for, for acknowledging that, by the way. That's, that's still a, a 
more or less fairly newer thing for me pro- the whole pronouns thing um i kind of i i had heard about it but i hadn't really had to deal with it until about two years ago when i was in college and a friend of mine went from being uh she her to uh they them and that really threw me for a loop because i'd been calling them they them i've been calling them a, a she for a year yeah i feel so. like college is kind of like one of those places that everyone learns and accepts the usage of new pronouns and stuff yeah yeah it's it's interesting before you go into the professional world get that shit sorted out in college you know <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. definitely because they're just like oh, i don't know what to do with this but yeah like i i found it very interesting from just like especially from multiple perspectives one a uh, literary perspective uh watching people especially older people like and how they manage dealing with um with the whole new pronouns thing because a lot of them are like like ah it's pronouns they them is not a pronoun but it it is even if it's not traditionally taught that way or wasn't uh, traditionally taught that way and still is progressing into being taught that way i think i think it's really interesting seeing them rebel against it i mean it's i feel like it's the same kind of thing as when parents struggle with you know when they change the way math is taught or when they made pluto mm. not a planet anymore i feel like part of it is that yeah. um actually i feel like a large part of it is that actually it's less of an acceptance and more of a struggle with a fundamental piece of knowledge that we're taught when we're young you know yeah that's I, very I just, true i think so my parents struggle uh, with the whole they them thing like yeah non-stop and, they're like do you want us to call you that and i'm like maybe a little bit <laughs> and they're like nah yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know, my, like my parents have, have struggled with it uh, here and there, but I mean, like, they don't have to deal with it within their household. But at the same time, it's like, okay. I mean, and I, again, I see where they're coming from to a certain degree. And I don't know. But it's like, it's thought... kind of weird because my parents, because I'm thinking about changing my name possibly just for fun. Really? Yeah. I don't know yet what though. And they're, they're like all open to like brainstorming with me new names. But when it comes to using like they, them pronouns, they like can't handle it. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it's plural. I'm like, the English language evolves. Like, her, catch up, keep up. Yeah, it's- exactly. Yes, it, it really does. And yeah. it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. <laughs> it's fascinating to see, to see how it's going to do that. I, uh, there's a, one of my, last tests that i had to do in college was uh in history of the english language or hell for short oh my and, god <laughs> and uh i mean it's true but yeah so uh sorry for my squiggles but yeah so it was just really one of the last question on the test was we we had learned about you know old english middle english new english and modern english blah 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 and so we had to take we had the same sentence that was given to us in, in like each of those different eras of English. And then we had the final question was we had to write out how we think or how we thought English is going to look a hundred years from now. And so most of, and mine was, I mean, it was drastically different because w- when you look at how the English language functions, it functions through speed, right? We, we have a time based language. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and we're always looking for ways to communicate faster and more efficiently. So things get cut down more and more and more. Like, freaking Among Us has been, is, is crazy to me. Um, and this is such a literary nerd perspective on this, but I mean, one game or like created an entirely new way of using a word suspicious. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, you know, shortening like ev- the word and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, it became sus. Now my brother yells at me all day calls me yeah, sus. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's and now it's become sus and it has so much more of a complex meaning like contextually and socially. Like it, that one game shifted that word that much. And it's that's, it's that's just That's definitely true. It's very fat. I wish that Among Us had become more popular when I was in college cuz I tell you what I would have written a paper on that. But yeah, so it's just very fascinating. Yeah, when I was a kid, I I hated writing. I was because I, I, I did a lot of writing on paper, you know, and that's my favorite. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do it when I have to, but I don't I don't like I don't particularly like to for long periods of time. And the other thing is that I we had to do multiple drafts, you know, mm-hmm. um, 
and I hated doing that. That was my that was my biggest thing. As I I hated having to go back and rewrite things that I felt didn't really need to be rewritten. Now though, like especially lately, I've I've come to find find that um I mean I enjoy doing uh second drafts, which is a huge development for me in my writing. Yeah, I usually write just like straight through. I used to love writing as a kid. I'd write entire books in like a week. I don't know how oh. I did it. I can't even get myself to sit down and write a paragraph nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, would, I mean... I, I love I writing on paper, too. Like, I hate typing. It really requires a certain level of passion, you know, yeah. um, to get into it enough to want to do it. Like, you have to be interested enough in it to do it. That's also part of uh, why I didn't like it so much was because it, I wasn't interested in the topic, you know? I was a... I've always been very imaginative. And I think that rather than being born as a writer, I was born as an imaginator. Like I was, I was always, I, when I would play, you know, with other kids or my siblings, I would, I mean, like I could practically see what like the, these imaginary things that I was, you know, painting into reality. Like I could. Yeah. I'm the same way when I was a kid. Yeah. I could like see it in my, like almost in my vision. And I've never lost that. I'm very grateful that I haven't. I think there's that, uh, what's that word for it when you can't see anything? Like in your, when you're like imagining stuff? What's it called? I don't know. I it's don't like, know if I've ever heard this. I've heard of a word. I think it's called, uh, let me Google it. I think it's called aphantasia. That might be the music thing. Hang on. Let me Google it. There's Fantasia is, is, um. The Disney animated thing. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I wonder if, uh, wonder if it means anything you know i think about it i think it does yeah it is called word. aphantasia okay okay yeah all right let me s i could spell if you want here a p h a n t a s i a there it is so i'll read the definition for you because i think that we have the opposite of it aphantasia is the inability to visualize mental images that is not being able to picture something in one's mind Many people with aphantasia are also unable to recall sounds, smells, or sensations of touch. Some Ugh. also report prosopagnosia, the inability to recognize faces. Bless you. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh... So there's the opposite of that, too, awful. where you could, like, hyper-visualize. But I know some artists that have aphantasia, like, can't visualize anything and still draw somehow. Yeah. I Man, I, I have no idea. I, um... That sounds like a living nightmare to me because I'm a very, I don't know, I'm very, I'm very fond of my senses and my brain. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm a very visual person, so I, I would never be able to, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> my art would look like crap. <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, though, I could, I was like, because I was a big role player as a kid, like in elementary school and stuff, running around on the playground, pretending to be warrior cats or whatever, which I think we talked in another podcast about that. But uh, I I always was able to, like, imagine things happening in front of me if I wanted to. Like, if I wanted yeah. to place something there, I could pretend that something is something else. Or I don't know how I did it. I don't think I could really. Maybe I could do that still. Probably not as well as I used to, but yeah. fascinating stuff. Also led to me just staring out into space in every class back in elementary school. I didn't do that so much, but <laughs> um, yeah. But speaking of names, we've been talking about names. I actually have multiple names that I go by, which I think I, I think in this day and age is not uncommon. But yeah, um, like somebody could say any one of the, any one of them, and I uh, I respond like this here. Like this is a. I mean, first of all, it's this. <laughs> Wildberry is your official middle name. <laughs> well, it's it's the middle name of my of my, of like the it's it's the middle name of what was going to be my pen name okay uh which was sam carmel and uh carmel being from carmel woods which was the the little neighborhood where i used to where i grew up and sam is just a name that i always love but like i don't know i the more i contemplated having a pen name i, I didn't want to because it was like if i'm gonna put so much time and effort into it i want my freaking name on it i don't want you know even if people don't like it oh well I mm -hmm. spent five years acting 18 books worth of all this stuff that I'm jamming into my brain, multiple universes and worlds and dimensions and odds and 
plot lines all interwoven and intersecting like yeah man i definitely spider to web. on that shit like i've been scripting a comic like i guess throughout my entire life thinking of this plot and writing it and working on it for i don't know how many years but it's like god if i publish that and everyone hates it you know i don't care i don't think <laughs> yeah i mean it's just yeah it's like it's like this is your it's your legacy it's what you're doing it's your life's work you've been building it you got to be proud of it or otherwise what's the point and so yeah so like it sam wildberry carmel became instead it shifted from being my pen name to being my avatar more or less my the the character that in my stories that represents me Mm, okay and so and he appears in every story and usually in just like some you know just a a filler position like you know position in the story like kind of like stan lee you know how how he's like he's like oh hey spider-man huh you know it's like it's it's similar to that that's sweet um but in but in my stories he is actively creating what is happening like he like so he has written himself into meeting these characters if like if and when they it happens is he like almost a god of, yes of these... he is that's sick because he is the, <laughs> the creator he is the creator of everything that's happening awesome um i, I have something going on like that in my story but i don't want to spoil it because that, that's a massive spoiler for my story yeah i shan't i, I shan't say what i'm doing but i'm doing something definitely okay. similar with a god type character not a self-insert but you know well cool uh man when oh, i we gotta when read I started... each other's shit now when we're done with it <laughs> oh fan- sure of course yeah. i mean it, it's uh <laughs> the stories i'm writing are far beyond what i would have ever thought they would be when i started five years ago let me mm-hmm. tell you that yeah like i so this signature is what i use when i when i uh create an art piece it's like i don't know it's just kind of like it's become its own little thing I dig that. That's cool. I have like, I think I went like a, through like a billion usernames online, and I would still probably respond to one if someone called me out on it from like DeviantArt 2012. Yeah. Called me, a, called me an old username. But Apostrophe has been my internet name for not that long. I think it's only been, I don't know, since I started Twitch. I think when I made my Twitch, that's when I was like, hmm, I need a clever name. And I was a big fan of grammar at the time, so I was gotcha. thinking about something grammar-related, <laughs> and I landed on apostrophe. And apostrophe is taken on Twitch, so I had to put another yeah. e at the end. And I went and I checked to see if that apostrophe person is active, because when they're not active, Twitch flips the username every like two years. And they were online, I don't know, once six months ago or something. And I'm so mad about it. <laughs> trying to get that, I'm trying to get that username. I will get it one day. I swear. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, like um, yeah. So names are names are definitely interesting for me. And of course, like there's my my real name, which some of, some people know, some people don't. I I'm not really all that shy about people knowing my real name because like I have written published works that have my real name on them, and I've shared them. Like of so, course. it's like I, I'm published. Like I'm I I don't want to be exactly hiding. My but it's real kind name of from... is like my website URL has my full name in it, so. <laughs> yeah i mean it's like yeah so and i know your real name because of facebook but also yes i I literally was on your facebook two seconds ago and then forgot your real name just now so (laughs) i was like oh it's gone um you know you know yenzela right Mm, who or uh yenzela never mind it's a it's another streamer uh it's actually i think that's how i found you was through her when she was uh she was streaming and she raided you one time and that's um <laughs> thank you for the little what I, i've been watching you draw that i've i've been i was just like oh that's cute and then I, I just noticed it had eyeballs on it and i was like oh it's cute i don't know what's going on with this art style i have right now it's kind of fun though i'm kind of yeah i it. really like it it's like um i mean it's uh, it's what's funny is it's exactly my colors like i the pur- purple and blue is like like you think you look at a wildberry pop tart that's where wildberry came from oh. um so <laughs> Yeah, so it's like it's like my colors, man. So I'm digging it. Wait, I have to look yep. up this streamer that you said raided me because I probably do know them, but I'm just I don't watch Twitch yeah. a lot right now. That's okay. Let's um, see. Oh my gosh, don't open over there. Web browser. Okay, let's see. Twitch. 
I swear I read, I, I like know their name. Y E N Z A L A. Oh my god. Who's playing on. Someone's playing music on the Twitch homepage. Y E N Z L A. Z A L A. Z A L A. Okay. Okay. Yes. I think so. I think I know them. Yeah. Um, yeah. they're actually, that's actually the owl's sister. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. wow, small world. <laughs> like, like, real life sister, yeah. And so, yeah, and they've, uh, in the, well, living situation is complicated. I don't feel like talking about that on this, but it's been a uh, long overdue for me to be getting out of here. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> but and as far as, like, writing goes, because, um, I feel like, I feel like that's something I would, I would I'm enjoying. I haven't gotten to talk about my my writing with anyone really for a while. Oh man, like it's. Do you do you have any other questions about my writing? I don't know. Or I go I'll off, go think flying of off into a tangent. You're free to go flying off. Like I'll interrupt you eventually <laughs> yeah, with questions. Fair. I I suppose uh, as far as like you know styles, um, you know the the genres that I that I write. I mean, I write all sorts. I write a little bit of, little bit of romance is kind of like slipped in here and there. A little bit of humor is in there. I write a little bit of sci-fi, and then a lot of horror and high fantasy and adventure, all fiction, yeah. obviously. But yeah, like the the two stories that I've been focusing on lately. I mean, there one of them I did I started for during college as my my uh, senior thesis project. Is a it's a story about halls. Well, it, well, I'm sorry. The story is called Halls, and it's a psychological horror. Mm, I remember you mentioning it on stream once. I think. Yeah, yeah. I I was trying to figure out which one I wanted to do, and you were like, "Oh, I go with that one." <laughs> um. Yeah. So I think I I think I've mentioned these to you before, but yeah. So the he main character goes home um after being at his I, I think it's his fortieth anniversary or something with his wife and they go home no i don't think it was for you whatever and so they go home and things start getting heated she runs off he goes to follow hits his head continues to follow anyway and he goes into this room he he's like feeling around in the dark and where he he knows that things should be you know like when you're familiar with a room you know you go into the bathroom you know the countertop is there mm -hmm, yeah. right like you can reach out and know that it's there and kind of uh, reorientate yourself with that as he's going to this room he's not finding anything that he knows should be there and so finally he flicks on he flicks on the light and finds himself in a, just a hallway that just keeps going forward and there's like three or four lights that are very harsh almost like spotlights kind of like cones of light out on onto the floor of this hallway the straight the carpet is strange hexagonal pattern with of blues and reds and purples and blacks and just very jarring to the eye the walls are gray the ceiling is black and it just and the lights are unevenly spaced so there's large sections of blackness and he even notices that the light switch he he just flicked is gone Ooh, okay and so and he's he's baffled he's a very intelligent person you know so he's he's like trying to logic this out he's, he's like okay what just happened where the hell am i and so he starts walking because what else are you gonna do and it's and it's just very fascinating the way that um as the farther he goes the more his mind is separated from between logic and fear ch like childish uh paranoia and survival and like and a little bit of insanity you know just yeah just kind of losing it you ever and play you ever play pt I've not, but I've seen. <laughs> well, multiple you need times. to play it. <laughs> I've seen the game multiple times, and I've I've always been very uh, fascinated. I've I've actually played the game that I've streamed a few times. Uh, is a uh, SCP Containment Breach. Yeah. That's uh, you know, it like watching the game. You're like, oh yeah, this is gonna get you. And every once in a while, it makes you jump. But man, like the one time that I was I was really streaming it, and I was somebody in my chat was like was like oh it's like get scared easy and i was like i was like no i really don't get scared easy honestly and then this big sound from the ambiance just made me jump like an inch in my chair and i just started laughing because i just said that i don't i don't <laughs> scare easily just like oh well 
here's a good example for you. Mm, yeah, just streamer things. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that one. And that one's, I, I did a lot of research all the way from like the form, like the style of lighting that would be there and to like the colors and the pattern in the carpet. I looked into, can you guess what carpet I actually uh, did research on? <laughs> I don't know, bowling alley? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's probably the most famous carpet. Oh, like from the like. Be, be, besides the magic carpet. The shining carpet. That's correct. Ah, my brain is so big. <laughs> big brain. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, cause think about it. That's it's a very unnerving carpet. But why is it right? And so I, I was curious about that, and I, it turns out that it's, it's very, um, it's, it's very interesting the way that that functions. But I'm not going to get too deep into that. Symbolic just... for like a bunch of stuff or something i I love the shining i think so, i read something about 9 11 i thought that was weird but something about the carpet i don't know crazy stuff i don't know if you ever heard that 9 11 like uh, freaking shining theory it was so weird that i read i've not but i'll, I'll have to look peek into that later. yeah that's a wild ride <laughs> yeah but yeah so the other story i've been focusing on is about a young man named mick O'Gara. He is the older brother of two sisters, and he is at this point their guardian. Uh, so he is he is the only thing between them and being in foster care. And for reasons we don't know, parents are out of the picture, and he doesn't like to even think about them. Mm, okay. But he he dies eighty six years before he was supposed to. How do we know he was supposed to die? When? Because when he dies, he wakes up and he's very upset, clearly. Like, he just dies just out of nowhere. It's like, uh, And the story opens up. Chapter 1 opens up with him in the ER, and they are trying to bring him back. And he is his, his brain is, like, dying, you know, from lack of oxygen in his last, like, 10, 15 minutes, 10 or 15 seconds of, of life. Mm -hmm. And when he gets to the afterlife... He meets his afterlife guide, which is uh, a man named Frederick, who looks stunningly like Abraham Lincoln. And he, uh... Yes? What target say? I... I don't know. Where's your note? I'm in the middle of a conversation. Podcast. Invasion one? <laughs> Invasion of family members. <laughs> okay. okay. I got it. Sorry. Family members be just like, let me just walk into to this person's room right now. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I was supposed to call Target today and about something, and I instead did food prep and then got on this and forgot. So that happens. I had, right? Yeah. So whatever. I'll call at some point. What are we talking <sighs> about? Okay. Wait. What were we talking about? Hold up. We were talking about um. The carpet in The Shining. We're talking about your story. The guy dies out of nowhere. Yeah. He has so a guy he... looks like Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Okay. I'm back yeah. at it. So <laughs> Frederick takes him to see the god Fate, who's more or less more or less in charge of the afterlife. So they go and they see Fate. Fate takes one look at Mick and's like, "You're not supposed to be dead yet." And he's like, "You're not supposed to be dead for quite a while. This is the problem." So. He he tells Mick he can't just send him back because you know what are it's like it'd be kind of weird if he just you know was pronounced dead and then suddenly woke up like they'd be like ah uh, what that doesn't make sense and so that doesn't work out well it goes against certain rules of their world mm -hmm. and so and again it's the rules that the gods can do so he's like all right I'll look for a loophole to get you back to the land of the living in the meantime I want you to go to these different worlds and fix some things that are also going wrong while I'm taking my attention away. So then Mick travels to my other stories to set important events in motion so that those stories can take place. Hey, that's pretty cool. I like that. It's definitely something that nobody I've ever spoken to has been like, oh, yeah, I've read something like that before. Nobody's ever said that. No, like, I, I haven't. Mm, let me think. Nope. <laughs> So it's just like, and it's it's that's oh my that's god, really Janny Jams timed himself out to like what was it an hour ago, and now he's back. <laughs> Hi, Janny Jams, welcome back. <laughs> oh my gosh, poor kid. But yeah, so 
Yeah, I can't I've think just, of anything that's ever done that before, so you're probably original. I mean, I, I, it's probably not an, an well, original idea. There's no idea, original thought, but, you know. But, I mean, I feel like it's maybe it's never been completed, at least not popularly. Yeah, I don't there's know. no famously known work that does that. And I could so, think like, of. and it's just, it's, it's just such a fascinating story. Like, I'm, that's probably, and it's a tragedy. It does not end happily. As much as I would love for it to end happily, I, I, it doesn't, you know, and, and I think we've discussed that before. Like, sometimes it's just gotta not. Yeah. A- and, you know, happily, sometimes it just doesn't. And there's no real way to, real good way to explain that, but I don't know. It, it's, it's a, it's a fantastic story. He creates, cause he fixes problems, but he also, he also creates some problems too, just because <laughs> it's human nature. And he, he causes a certain character who was never meant to exist to, be born interesting um, yeah because th- he's he's in a certain world and there's an explosion at this library a big uh, it's like a big spike uh like big spire you know big think of like a big green spike up in the air and that's this giant library and it uh there's an explosion a piece of the building falls and lands on this on this woman who's walking home and i don't know like my my icon on discord this uh character with the crazy rainbow hair and blowing a bubble yeah. like glowing eyes behind sunglasses that is rex and he is more or less like the superman of the universe he's just he has just crazy ridiculous powers and so he is actually there to help stop this you know this explosion and he's saving all these people and mick being you know him he can't help but mention to them that this lady was just, you know, had this piece of this building land on her and she was supposed to die there. Mm. But so Rex goes over, saves her. They fall in love and have a child who was never meant to exist. And so because she was never meant to exist in the first place, she's almost completely out of the hands of the gods. Like they, they can't do anything to her. They can't kill her because she, that would cause problems and they can't, like, there's nothing they can do. They can't touch her. and. So it just puts her on a different level and creates a really interesting dynamic. That is pretty fascinating. So this character plays a part in all your stories, but at the same time, the stories stand on their own. Like fine. not all of them. Not all. Of not them. not okay. all. Not all of them. He um because some stories branch from ones previous. Okay. And there's actually there's a story that leads up to him actually dying because it was not. That there was an event that caused him to die, and because everything was going was spiraling out of control in these two dimensions, the level of complexity to all this is ridiculous. Sometimes, um, <laughs> like I'm, I sit, I sometimes I sit back and I'm kind of like, I hope somebody is actually able to follow all this. <laughs> like when I'm finally done with it, it's like it's gonna be this crazy masterpiece. Everybody's gonna be like, okay, it's a little above my pay grade to re- be reading this. I used to read, um, like, uh, Discworld as a kid. Like, uh, what's that guy's name? You know, Terry Pratchett? Discworld I have series. no idea. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> that's, like, a big body of work that's fantasy, but not adult fantasy as much. But yeah, massive body of work that a lot of people really love and all is interconnected, separate stories. Some characters just appear in certain books. Some characters don't really fascinating i love this world like a lot but i was really into that as a kid so i'm sure some people will definitely like enjoy your work people like that stuff i definitely like like that stuff yeah this world is sick i'm a big fan if you have the chance to read one go read it or go watch the hog father movie <laughs> yeah yeah so like there's that and then i'm i'm, tr- I'm doing my best to draw this uh not doing well uh th- there's this character named fish ermine who you may have you may have heard of him i may have spoken about is that about the guy him that's like actually fish size but he's like ripped yes yes that is fish ermine he is you... like a yeah. bodybuilder arms and legs and because you had shown me a picture of him like i can't just draw arms very well. just alone like how he's ripped and stuff and a fish and i thought he was maybe i don't know what size and then you showed him to me to scale a different picture. with other characters, and I was like, "Oh my god, he's the size of an actual fish!" <laughs> yeah, he's like, 
he's he's just a little a little fish dude with bodybuilder arms and legs and you're like what how is this a thing and he, he is and that's that's uh that's from my kids this is so bad i feel so, this is so weird i i'm like i'm like wow this looks this looks marvelous next to your bob ross and your, uh, sorry Barry, and, i have reference no, good. i have reference like, for bob he's in front of me right now <laughs> that's fair i'm just like i'm like oh boy this looks fantastic uh-huh. all right let's go with this one Boop. no he's not brown why, how does that keep on? I don't understand why that's that, why that's doing that. Um, yeah, the drawing program. It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> that's what we get for browser-based art programs these days, I guess. There we go. This is way more advanced than it used to be years ago, though. When it comes to sharing canvases on the internet with people, it it used to be like you go in and open a canvas and there's only one layer and like one brush to use <laughs> and you used to be able to draw with like all kinds of people like all over the yeah. world online that was so popular for a while I forget what those things were called but now we have so many layers so we shan't we shan't shit talk the Oops. uh the art my program bad. oh my gosh <laughs> I keep forgetting i have the uh i have the the bucket on but yeah we- so he's just he's just a goofy little goofy little fish dude and um, that world is, you know, just becoming a little bit more detailed every day. You know, like, uh, I just, Sir Dr. Flapjack started off as a joke, uh, between me and my friends. Um, my voice gives me super strength. And <laughs> it was just so goofy. And it evolved into, you know, like, it evolved into this whole character. I and mean, you, you've seen him. He's, he's invisible, uh, but he wears like a suit and a top hat and goggles and gloves and, he drives up uh drives a flying pancake with his friend Gareth the giraffe my god who's a who's an existential giraffe <laughs> this crazy plot <laughs> uh and that like that world though it is technically connected to the rest of my my stories well really is <laughs> yes yes and fascinating it's very weird how it is because one of my favorite characters I've ever created, his name is Will. He does not have a last name because he doesn't know what his last name is. So Will has, Will is like my, my fourth wall breaking comic relief character. And he's also one of the most overpowered characters in everything that I've ever written. And the reason that is is because, so he, when he was a, when he was a kid, his family was, were, was a bunch of cannibals. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. not going. Guarantee you, you would not be able to predict where this is going. So his family was a bunch of cannibals, and they he was the best at trapping people in the family, right? He was really good at it. He didn't like doing it. Uh, he doesn't like eating people or really meat at all. So he, he's he's a vegetarian, and his fa- his cannibal family wasn't really a big a big fan of that. And they're like, hey, if you don't like help us catch people, we're going to eat you. He's like, well, I'm gonna run away. And so he runs away. They chase him. He hides in the woods and lives there for a couple of years. And he finds this rock, and it has a little patch of moss growing on the top of it, like a couple of little leaves growing out of it. And uh, he draws a face on it. And names it Robert. And Robert becomes his friend and goes with him everywhere. And uh, he is eventually found by his family. He runs away into, into this town and hides in the attic of these of this old man's house for many years, like ten years, I think. And so he so he lives there and he he teaches himself how to read because this guy was he's a clock he's a clockmaker and a librarian. And also a bartender because he's actually a spy for the underground army of it's I tell you what I'm telling you everything is so interconnected but so he's a librarian he has lots of old books up in his attic and so he's so Will teaches himself how to read uh, how to fight with a sword he he like reads some old magazines about sword fighting and all these different things and he has this uh, this fencing sword. Uh, that he has that he finds up there in in the attic and so will eventually moves out and you know like he he eventually leaves the attic of of this old man's house goes back to the forest and becomes this um more or less like a myth kind of to the people in the town they're like like oh be careful of the of the spirit of the wood spirit that lives out there because he he would he fashioned these smoke balls out of like mushrooms and everything right it's like he could like take like a this bundle of stuff 
throw it at the ground and disappear uh, in like a big poof of of like bright green smoke. And so he's just and so he kind of made a myth out of himself so that people would kind of stay away from him. And he he talks to Robert as if Robert has a personality. He believe, like, and he thinks that Robert does have a personality, but he knows that Robert isn't real. He's not crazy. He just is weird. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a little castaway situation. Yeah, a little bit. But so what's now? Here's where things get really interesting, though, because Will has a power that is extremely powerful. That was really redundant. <laughs> but so if Will believes that something is true without the sh- without a shadow of a doubt like there is not a single bit of doubt in his mind that it's true it is true interesting so that has know, a lot of consequences <laughs> it, it does it does and now the will in so i i write through an omniverse so like there's an infinite number of possibilities but uh in this universe this the effect of this power only extends to his immediate awareness you okay. know yeah so like if you if if he were stupid enough to believe that a stick that if you were to point a stick at somebody they would die you convinced him of that like he and he really believed you and if you pointed a stick at someone they would die if yes. he turned around and he didn't see you do it they wouldn't yeah okay so not too much chaos but just a little bit no <laughs> yeah just a little bit just a little bit and so because he believes that Robert has a personality. He does actually have a personality. This rock actually is sentient because he believes that it has a personality. That's sweet. It's like his son. <laughs> and so Sir Dr. Flapjack's world is actually Robert's imaginary world. Oh. It is. Okay. And so like, I isn't that bizarre? Like, it's, That's bizarre. I like it though. <laughs> it's, it's a fun, like, wow. Okay. This is weird. But I dig it. So, yeah, so it's like his own little imaginary world that he's made up, and it's got all these weird, funky things going on. He's a rock. What else does he have to do besides sit around? So, yeah, so, and there, I uh, I wrote a paper called The Will Concept for one of my classes in college, really exploring this idea where Ron, who is a, another another character, I won't go into too much depth on that, but he, um, he likes to experiment with magic and things. And so, and he notices some, like a couple things that are interesting about Will, because Will's human, like that he's not some sort of, you know, strong, not species. Um, he, he's not like a, you know, a vampire or anything like that. Like he, he should yeah. not be able to keep up with these other characters that he's then, he's later traveling with. At, like when they're sparring and fighting and practicing and everything, he should not be able to keep up with them, but yet he can. And he can, he just seems to be able to do things that he, that don't make sense. So he start, he kind of looks into it and he finds that the smoke balls that he uses have no magical qualities to them at all. Yet Will can teleport, seemingly teleport from all the way over there to all the way over there without any magical properties. Why? Because that's how he believes they work. He saw it on a screen one time. Like, you know, saw some dude with a, you know, like a ninja with smoke balls. And he's like, and they're gone. And he's like, whoa, okay, cool. And so he thinks that that's how it works. So that's how it works. Okay. So he's basically giving himself powers by accident. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just because of his own beliefs. Does he ever know that? I mean, that's probably, I don't, I don't know if you um, want to spoil he, anything. but <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you kind of want to... Like, well, Ron, Ron kind of figures out this power that he has. He's like, okay. Cause, and then he realizes how dangerous it can really be. Because depending on, like, just depending on certain, you could convince Ron or convince Will of many things because he's not an expert on everything. Mm-hmm. But one of the tests that Ron does, one of the experiments that he does is he, he goes and he shows Will a magic trick, right? He's like, hey, I've got, he's like, I've got three cups and a ball, right? Uh, and he's like, He's like, I'm going to put this, put the ball underneath this cup, and then I'm going to move the cups around and you pick which one it's under, right? And, uh, and he's like, yeah, all right. And he's like, okay. And he puts it underneath there and mixes up the cups and then tells him to pick one. Now there's a, because he doesn't truly believe that it's underneath the specific cup that he picks, it won't necessarily be under there, right? Yeah. There's a chance that it will be, but it, uh, but it doesn't, it's not a guarantee. Because there's doubt. But what Ron had secretly done is he had put pushed the ball into his lap. So it was not in any of the cups. Oh, okay. And what he found is that instead of it being in his lap, it was underneath one of the cups. 
because it will still believe that it was underneath one of the cups, regardless of whether it was the one he picked. That's cool. I like that. That's smart. <laughs> so it's just a really interesting. So like, and he, he continues to learn about this and a character, um, he, Ron talks to a, another character who's very scared of Will for no apparent reason. And when he talks to him about it, he says that Will is very dangerous in certain dimensions. Like in, in other parallel universes, is very dangerous because of because there's a number of different branches in his like um in his backstory that can cause him things to go very wrong he can become a very dark person he can like because regardless of whether or not he actually stays with his family or not he still has that power yeah okay so like he can like sometimes he stays a cannibal and he just is extremely dangerous and he <laughs> sometimes sometimes he is sometimes he is shunned by the rest of society and he just believes that society is evil and his and this power does not only extend to just his immediate awareness but is in fact universal so the second he truly believes that it becomes reality and all of civilization falls apart that shit's pretty and fascinating that's pretty crazy it's a crazy power. I can't imagine and writing stuff like that. That's like too much. <laughs> yeah. Do you it's, ever uh, do you ever like get scared that you're biting off more than you could chew with these stories? How do you mean? Like, are you ever fearing that you might never finish it? Because it sounds like a lot of content, you know. It's something that's crossed my mind a couple times. I don't know if and, that's uh, something that only I worry about with my stuff. So I'm lazy. No, like <laughs> no, definitely. I definitely, you know, there's I. I've struggled to stay consistent with my writing sometimes, but really, do I have water in this? I do. Cool. Sorry, I had to take a drink. But I've been, I've thought about it. It's like, you know, if, if I died before all of this was written, um, I think I would be upset, but I think that... Ah! That, oh my whoa. god, that scared the shit out of me. That's the timer for the podcast. Keep talking. Finish your finish your oh, thoughts. Okay. Finish your thought. <laughs> Alright. Um, I didn't know it had been going on for so long. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh what was I saying? Oh yeah, I, I feel like I feel like if, if I were to not finish out if I were to start to realize that I wasn't going to finish it all, especially if I had published multiple pieces at that point, I think I would record it, you know? I would I would just get the ideas out i would i would just put it all out there and i would you know if lo and behold i do end up dying before it's all finished then it would be available for people to be like okay wow so this really what like this is where this was gonna go and mm, they would actually be able to see smart. where it was gonna yeah. go okay um, i remember that for when i'm on my deathbed <laughs> uh, you know it's like anything but i i definitely i mean it's my it's my calling it's why i started writing I have to at least have to at least try to finish. Yeah, well, I'd be excited to read it. Yeah, I'm all done. A lot, a lot, honestly, a lot of people, a lot of people, are very excited for me to to me to finish my books and my stories. And uh, I wish that I could have a better environment that was more accepting of me just wanting to sit down and write. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. I'm sure you're almost there. You know. Yeah, I hope so, man. I, hope I so really too. hope so. I'm stuck at my house. Not that my parents suck or anything that bad. They suck sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> I can't yeah. trash talk them that hard in the podcast either because they listen to it. But yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but my my parents are. But I had full plans. Uh, like, a, I mean, I was supposed to go away to college, like like uh, last semester or whatever. Haven't gone. I felt pretty stuck. I guess graduating high school, not going anywhere since then i mean it's yeah. rough especially when you want your own space to like curate ideas and like be creative and stuff yeah it's it's definitely yeah it's hard when you're when you're a creative mind that is being forced to do non-creative things yeah it's 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 really difficult like that's why i, I can't stand job applications like they suck so much it's the same thing over and over and i don't get any response i don't get any you know feedback or anything hardly ever and it's like man mm -hmm. give me a shot here <laughs> especially at this time like i feel like yeah, yeah, once definitely. once you get a job and get your schedule sorted out then you could start like writing and drawing but it really all it's all time like time is, yeah. there's so little time in the day <laughs> to, to do anything yeah. personal wise when it comes to art 
and writing and creative work i suppose i mean like i i don't know i honestly i think i've been slacking off more than i really should be i think so too i've um, been slacking too but you know <laughs> I, I mean give like on, some credit <laughs> on all things like as far as applying for jobs it's like man i i just hate it and it's really hard to make myself do it yeah i think you gotta like find just something to settle with for a bit you know i know and even it that sucks. it's like well, these people are freaking hiring me i'm having issues but I, with my job right now as we speak <laughs> i don't know if you saw that or anything but no I, yeah, I did not my boss has like fired me with air quotes around it oh i got oh, laid off terribly sorry about that. with air quotes because i work for panera and uh they ah. laid off all their drivers at once the entire country of panera bread to go wow. and switch to doordash but oh. i'm i'm being casually offered a position as a barista at the same time because <laughs> they still want me around so yeah. it sucks because i was a delivery driver and that's like what i something that i really love always want to do it since i was in high school i wanted to drive for work yeah and uh interesting now, now i might be a barista but that's okay <laughs> It's a big huh. pay cut too, but you know. So I think that like for me it was I had this stupid passion to become a delivery driver when I was in high school. Parents didn't let me in high school because obviously I would have crashed the car, but it was just something that I just applied for as an adult for fun and I got it. <laughs> yeah. But if you have something I... like that, like something in high school or middle school that you really want to do that kind of was kind of dumb, like I don't know, work at GameStop. That's something that I did too. Um try it <laughs> yeah i i don't know i never really had a, a big job i was like man i want to do this like it was like ah dude i don't know like yeah i guess i don't, I, I don't know i, I guess just... i was kind of a weirdo with that but you know <laughs> i don't know what it is about know. me and some panera people, <laughs> some people really like it you know like really like the idea of a certain job i just i just i don't know there was nothing that really interested me enough because everything was just too real yeah yeah like i mean i cannot express enough how much in my head some of this stuff is like it's i mean i think i feel like that's kind of come across pretty pretty strongly like i'm extremely imaginative yeah it's and hard. i can't really help that it's hard to work in a field that isn't creative you know when you want to yeah. be a creative i definitely feel and, that way at work sometimes yeah and so it's like it's just it's difficult to, to that's really why say I like driving them when you're driving you get to think if you have a car, yeah, just a I, wreck. I, like, I like to drive. <laughs> I like to think when I when I'm driving. Yeah, um, if you have a car, I would recommend doing delivery. Just because when I drive and I'm doing deliveries, I am brainstorming story ideas, like and art ideas, the entire time. And it's a lot of you don't have to be around people. The pressures are low. I don't know if you ever thought about that becoming a driver. Well, I think w one of the things I'm I'm uh, gonna be looking at like today or tomorrow is um moving to like uh st charles or st peter's do, going to, to work in at amazon and i mean because they, they pay like 15 bucks an hour which isn't bad and amazon. they have <laughs> yeah i know but like i i have to get out of here yeah like, i've looked gotta. at them too for delivery and i don't the their, their delivery doesn't seem bad the hours are their delivery crazy. is like and like it's I 10 just... hours a day for four times a week which is just strange to me and i can't like hold for for dead hours like that <laughs> i don't know anyway I'm, I, I, sh I'm sure you'll find something like yeah i i mean really like i i didn't want to do i didn't i didn't really want to um go to amazon if i could help it but yeah. i i'm i'm done I, I have to, i'm just like man you're driving me crazy i'm driving them crazy everybody hates it and i'm just you know what else am i gonna do here yeah, just don't forget to look in weird places for jobs. You never know what you might. Yeah, like, I mean, find. I'm I'm still gonna I'm still gonna apply for writing positions because that's I mean that's what I went to college for. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Keep I mean, keep it up. Keep building that writing portfolio. Eventually, someone will probably pick you up. I don't really know yeah, how I the hope so. how the writing world works with that stuff. I'm just assuming that it works the same way that like drawing does, or if you have the portfolio and you have the work to show for your skill, that people will want to hire you a little bit more. Yeah. Anyway, I think we should end it here. I right. want to read your, your stuff now so bad, so you better finish. You better sit down and type. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Now I want to read. 
I mean, like, I, I can forward you a couple of my, like, um, like I could send you hauls if you wanted or, or some of my other works just, like, as they're in progress. I'm always um, down, yeah. Invite me to a Google Doc. Put me as view only. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, I can, you can put down comments if you want. It's not going to bother me. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, because I want to read your stuff now. Because now I'm all, you yeah. got me, like, hooked. You basically pitched an entire universe to me. Right. Leaving, leaving me on, leaving me on like red here. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. All right. Well, thank you well, for thank coming. thank you for having yeah. me on the backseat drawing. I think what is it called? <laughs> backseat drawing. Yep, that's it. The podcast. <laughs> backseat drawing. Okay, yeah. cool. Hey, I nailed it. Yeah, you did. Um, backseat drawing and what watching me draw this monstrosity that is <laughs> fish ermine and an awful cat <laughs> medallion and yeah, all man. sorts of. It ridiculous thing yeah uh, um we gotta say goodbye to the youtube viewers as well because oh goes yeah on shoot i forgot this yeah. is going on youtube yeah hey, hey youtube viewers you Hi, should YouTube. all come on to twitch every monday wednesday friday 3 p.m to 6 p.m eastern standard time wildberry is a frequent in our twitch chat if you're interested in his stuff also on youtube though i don't have any videos up there i don't think i am smiley muppet 16 on on youtube of course so and i will yeah. i will be linking your twitch like when i post it as well so you guys go check him out and no good don't forget to stop by on twitch thank you so much for coming guys